Okay guys, I'm just kind of shooting video as I go along. Hopefully I can get something put together that's uh, decent. I'm waiting on the stores to open right now and uh, I'm going to go get some diesel and I'm going to go get a fuel filter to place in between this line here. They didn't have one, they just had it connected straight to the pump. So I'm going to put a filter in there, so I'm going to have to get a filter, some hose clamps, some more fuel line. Now, uh, one of these rivets was not there, so I had to put my own rivet in. The plate, okay, this gas tank and plate here just sits in slots. So this whole thing can come out and the plate that fastens to this outer wall was just laying in here it wasn't riveted on so I also had to rivet that on uh, and I'm thinking about putting a couple screws in each end to make that a little a little more sturdy and I just take the screws off if I ever need to take this out. Which, when you put this uh, cover, I got dog toys over there. But anyway, if I put the cover on there, you know, that fits over this and it holds it in place. So you don't have to, but I thought putting uh, some screws in there give it a little more support. So I'll do that later. Uh, your exhaust, as I said, runs under the unit. So I added these pieces of metal to raise it so this has more room. Might be a better way to run it, but I kind of like this idea. It's got more space from the unit. You just want to be sure you're not setting this on anything combustible when you're running it. Now I am going to get some heat tape, and I think I'm going to wrap this part of the pipe. Uh, other than that, until I get the uh, other stuff I need to finish this, I think that's going to be about it. You can see how this is kind of bent. I put this rivet in and it's good and tight, but I probably should have tried to straighten this out some, but it's holding it fine. That'll be fine. Now, I have had the motor running. It looks like everything's going to work. I think the hardest part about this thing really is figuring out this remote and the controller. I have been watching a lot of videos about it. I think I kind of have some of it down pat. Uh, the controller, which is this right here. When you power it on, it is in Chinese. And when you to you had to pair this to your controller, and when to do that you had to push the power and the OK button at the same time, hold hold it for just a second, and then go to your controller here, and you'll hit uh, either the up button or down button. I'll have to figure out which, but it's one of them. And then that pairs your controller to this, and then it will pull up. Uh, your watts and temperature and stuff like that. Basically, what I, all I plan on really doing is it's pretty complicated to go in there and just keep messing with settings every time it's disconnected from power. So I just want to be able to set the uh, temperature and turn get it going. And only thing I want to use this for is when I'm up in the tent is maybe adjusting the temperature up and down which uh, hopefully I'll have it set to a comfortable temperature and I won't have to mess with that and to be able to power it off. Other than that, I'm not too worried about this remote. But anyway, uh, I'm fixing to run the store, get some more stuff, and uh, I did zip tie this tank to this tray here as it was just sitting there. And I just did that for a little extra safety. 
But uh, like I said it, I did have it on. It did run. Of course, without diesel, you can't get it to uh, run the pump or anything. But that's going to be changed soon. And we'll see how this thing fires up. Okay, so I just got back from the store. And I've got my fuel filter. Be sure you pay attention to the arrow on the filter. Your direction of uh, fuel flow. And I got about 12 inches of fuel line from the store. And uh, got it hooked up. I hope I've got enough in there. I don't think that the curves are too bad. I don't think that's going to kink. When I put the cover on, it will push against this just a little bit. But it's not going to be in the way. You know, just hold everything in there good. Uh, all my clamps are tight. I uh, do have, I got some of this uh, heat wrap that I'm going to put around the exhaust pipe over there. I'll show you that when I get done with it. And then for now, I just got some clamps to put on the wires. And I'll just clamp it to the battery when I run it for now until I figure out for sure, you know, what I... All I want to do, I think I want to keep it portable, so this would keep it portable. So uh, let me wrap the exhaust pipe and then I'll show you that. But fuel pump's done. Okay, I'm outside in the backyard and I've got some, just put a little bit of diesel in here and you know, checking for any kind of leaks. And so far it's looking good. I didn't put the cover on yet because I want to, you know, see what everything's doing. Uh, I've got an old battery out here. It's not the best battery, but it's going to work. Okay. we got to prime the pump. Now, from what I understood, you hold your down button and the sun button. And then you hit the up button. And now you can hear the pump fire, priming. So you hit the um, controller. It's the down button and the sun button. And then it'll go to, you can't see it out here, it'll say H, something or another, off. You get the up button to turn it on. And that starts the pump primer. And you're going to leave that running until it primes. And it's going to get faster as it goes. You can see diesel coming into the filter. We're just going to let that run. Keep an eye for leaks. So far, so good. They did say it would take a while. You can slowly see the level coming up in the filter. So you see what it's doing? It's slowly putting fuel in there, and I'm not going to keep recording because it might take a little bit longer, but you see it's rising. Well, it's shut off by itself, and as you can see, there's some fuel on this green line now. So it's the pump is primed and has fuel in it. The filter's not all full, but I don't guess it has to. So uh, the next step is going to be to program the remote to the, the controller and I, I'm going to do that in just a minute. Okay, so this is your remote. And you're probably not going to be able to see the screen on these. 
but you power it on and I've, it says connecting now what you want to do is come down here hit the up button I think Connecting, please wait. And then it's got my manual, ambient temperature, oil temperature. Okay, I got it fired up. I'm still going to have to play with the controllers to get the temperatures and all your settings because you can adjust fan speed, pump speed, you know, all that kind of stuff. 12 volt, 24 volt. Uh, you see the smoke coming out the exhaust. You can hear the pump running. Fans running. You, I said outside, you can't really see the controller. But that controller's got bars that will show you how hot the internal temperature's getting and stuff. And I'll try to go over that when I can get in some lighting where you can see the display. We're going to walk around here and check our... For leaks. No leaks. That pump's getting faster. Eventually all them air bubbles will get out of there. Notice the smoke stopped. Well, it's still a little bit. That's the sound. Pump's getting faster. Exhaust is getting a little bit louder and faster. The air coming out of here is getting warmer and stronger and stronger. Seems to be going pretty good now. That burn off all the newness. Now, down here, this is a heat tape clay wrap. And as that hot heats, it'll turn that really hard. But that should protect the stuff from heat down there. And you can see it's burning off the newness. We got some warm air here. I'm gonna sit here. It's cold out here, so some nice dry warm air. Oh yeah, it feels good. It's like our smoke on our pipes getting less. This is quieter than the uh, heater we had in our big camper when we had it. Air's getting hotter. You can see heat coming off that pot. I can, but the smoke is almost gone. This is getting so hot now that. It's really warm. It's getting hotter. It's getting to where it's, it'll burn you. Back up some more. That's hot. And see, that's why, like, you stick this, all this will be outside of the tent. And then I'll, I'll probably get an extension for this hose and run this up into the rooftop tent. And that's why you need to be able to control the temperature from up there so you don't have to run, get out of the tent each time you want to do this. So I have to figure that controller out and, you know, get the temperatures set. Oh, that's hot. Very hot. I mean, I'm getting further and further away. Just sitting right here is warm. 
I want to say it's in the 40s. I don't know if it's hit 50 yet. Really quiet. It just sounds like a bunch of air. Now we're getting hot enough down here that that stuff I put on the pipe is smoking. Now I do think I'm gonna stop it, or I'm gonna go get the cover and get it off of this, and that off of this. Okay, I put the case back on it. Now I'm gonna have to take it back apart and see what's pushing this out so it'll fit up in there better. I also bent this exhaust pipe down some so it's away from this side. Really, really warm air. I'm gonna let this run until it stops smoking that clay that I put down there for protecting the bottom of the unit. It'll also protect some of whatever it's setting against. Oh, it was really good. Looking really good. Now on this remote, on this remote when you get it, when you turn it on the first time it's going to be in Chinese. You can't see it out here. But to get it off of Chinese, you're going to push the OK button and hold it until it goes to English. And then you can set everything. And I've already done that. And the temperature is already going up on... It's in Celsius. I think that's the outside temperature. I'm sitting in a chair right now that's blowing on me. And it is really nice sitting outside. Now remember, this will be blown in the tent, so it's going to be actually a, quite a ways away from this. And then you've got your exhaust. Okay, and what you got to remember is you don't want your exhaust blowing to where your intake line is going to be sucking air into and pushing it into your tent. So you want to keep that blowing away from your intake. Now let's do some temperature. I got just a little gauge here. Turn it off there and hot. Right there at the end of the thing. 15, or 200 and climbing looks like we're going to stick around 200 202 yeah, that's dropped a little bit so 200 I'm going to say 200 and then your exhaust Nice and quiet. It just sounds like air blowing. Let's 
still letting that fall. It's blowing right on me, man. It's just warm. You can sit outside with it blowing on you and stay warm. Hey, we're down to 76. I just want to see how hot this is on the side right here. It's warming up. I think I'm gonna get some more just regular heat tape and tape from there up to about here. I might just tape that whole hose. Because there's that heater's right there and I don't guess it's gonna hurt it. touch it. Okay, this has been running a while. And I wanted to check this. You can touch this case. It's slightly warm. So you know, if you get right in there, probably gonna be the hottest point. But I don't think there's an air gap in here, so I think we're good. That that hooked up to the bottom of the case is gonna be fine. Forty-five degrees outside, and I was sitting back there, and I was staying warm. This is gonna heat that tent. I would say probably on low speed, low heat and keep it plenty warm and cold temperatures.